Well, hi. Thank you for coming and joining me here in my shop today. It's September 29th, almost the end of September. Holy smokes, the time is going by. And uh, this is video number two on this Sony machine. The first video, I spent a long time discovering what was probably obvious to people with more experience with these kinds of machines. A belt needed to be uh, replaced. So that should be, I'm hoping, a fairly straightforward uh, matter in this machine. And that's what I hope to do today. I have the belt. The belt has come from Deck Tech. This is a... Uh, company in the UK. I got this by, uh, by airmail. <laughs> Took a while though, but I got it. Amazing to me that I can buy something like this. This was under 10 bucks into my mailbox all the way from England. It's just, it just blows me away in a sense. Okay, now I think what I gotta do is take off the cover and expose the uh, area where the belt is and start looking at how to uh, how am I going to replace this? Hopefully it's easy. Okay, so I think I did mention that I don't normally work on things of this vintage. I'm usually looking at stuff that's almost a hundred years old, in fact. So, yeah, I'm not as experienced as maybe I would hope to be, but there is only one way to get experience. Discovered that in life. There we go. I think if I take this bottom panel off, I'll be able to access where the belt is. That's what I seem to recall. Let's take it off. Let's see what we get. And I see there's a lot of screws coming through here. Well, just two actually. This one and this one. So something is held to this base. So how this comes off. these four screws or it's been like a month since I looked at this or so while I was waiting for the belt to come I think I had found a service manual for this guy which I'll probably have to refer to if it's not obvious once I get this off you see it's not even obvious this is going to come off Okay, already hitting the wall here. See, there's a bunch of screws back here. That looks like the back plate will come off. Yeah, before I take out, uh, you know, sometimes the screws that are exposed on these devices, on, on any kind of device, is actually there to hold something in, not to hold a plate like this on. So just taking all the screws loose could lead you into some kind of jackpot situation. I don't want to get into There's more screws here screw here. Yeah, I jumped at these four a little too quick. I thought this bottom plate was one separate piece, but it's not. It comes around. Yeah, I better not fool around here. I'm going to look at that manual and see what it, see what it shows me. Okay, so we're looking at the uh, service manual for the HCD CP300 which is that unit that's on my bench. The equipment can be removed using the following procedure. Cover front panel section. Front panel section. Back panel sub-assembly. Main board. Power board. CD mechanism. Deck. That's what I'm after right there. Base unit, motor board, tray assembly, slider, stalker assembly. Follow the disassembly procedure in the numerical order given. Okay. Number one. Upper cover. Okay. Did that. Very good. Did step one. Oh my gosh. Look what has to happen here. Holy smokes. So they're showing all these connectors that need to be disconnected. Um, that makes me anxious. I don't like this kind of stuff. Uh, screw. Looks like the front comes off. Gives you access. This is the tape mechanism. I'm not interested in that. 
that's up at the top part. I'm interested in down at the bottom part here. Tape mechanism deck two, back panel sub assembly. So now the back is coming off. It's mostly screws, looks like, and that connector. There's the uh, the drive is sitting right in here that I'm after. Main board. I really don't want to do anything. Main board, power board. Not interested in that. CD. Here we are. CD mechanism. CD mechanism deck. This is what I have to get at. Showing it being lifted off the bottom. Oh, it's just these two pieces on this diagram. Well, what happened to everything else? Can, can this come out with everything else left in place? Look at this. This piece goes right on top here. Oh my gosh. Hey, tell me I have to... Basically, the tape deck is in the foundation of the machine. i got, I got to dig all the way down to the foundation. Uh, 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 what makes me anxious about doing this kind of thing is the more you take apart, the more trouble you're heading for. At least I'm heading for. Okay, so here's the tape deck out. Base unit. Don't think I need to worry about that. Motor board. Well, this looks like the tape deck here. Motor board. Motor, couple screws. What's it holding? Stalker assembly. Here's the belt. See the belt is going on this pulley. This motor is up through here. It looks very accessible. Um, stalker assembly. Are they, are they showing this lifted off? I don't think so. I think they're showing it well. Jeez, it's hard to tell. Stalker assembly. Rotate the cam. This is the cam here. Rotate the cam and up the stalker assembly at the full. What? Rotate the cam and up the stalker assembly at the full. So it must mean you turn this to some degree and then up, you can lift this up. I think that's what they're trying to say. Could be that this piece, well, is, is, is under this wheel? I don't think so. I think it's above. I think this wheel is above. So if I have to up the stalker assembly, well, if I have to do it, I'll do it at the full. Whatever the heck I'm talking about. And the rest of this is all just how you disassemble this further. But I don't think... I think we've covered the belt part already. Oh my gosh. Yikes. Test mode. Interesting. There's a test mode. Well, okay, we don't want to get into any of that. Hopefully not as necessary. It's really all about this. Let's see if I can spot this in the machine, just the way it is right now, where, where this is. Um, okay, we'll go back and look at the machine itself. access to into here at all. Well, this is a big job. This is a big, big job here. Um, an awful lot of stuff has to happen to get down to that part. What am I not thinking of that would make this easier to do? So what if I got the bottom right off? Uh, it said follow these steps in order, but you know, that's not my style. If I got the bottom right off, well, then you'd be, you'd have access to the bottom of this. How's that going to help you get around here? I didn't see anything that quite looks like this. So th this is the side. This is, I believe this is the back fronts out there. If this is the back, then I need to expose the back to get at this. Maybe just taking the back off the uh, machine might do it. Let's take a look again. So 
Again, if I get the back off, I'll have access to where the uh, belt is. That's my thinking. Uh, in the meantime, getting the back off. That goes with it. So the board. So the board goes way out into here. And this is the area where the uh, hot stuff is, and it can cool off out here. Yeah. It does not look to be attached to the back. Maybe that screw there. Maybe another one down here. Side screws are, are out. There's nothing in there. Well, screw there, holding this. Looks like that, 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 that. This, this clip, what's this clip doing here? Big thing, do not remove clip. Okay, don't know exactly what that's doing. Doesn't seem to be doing anything. Putting it back on. Okay, shouldn't have done that. We'll leave that like that. So I think it's a matter of loosening the back, pulling it a little bit, seeing what else is holding it in, and loosening all those. Now, these are all identical screws. I'm going to have to start keeping track of every little screw I take out of here. A couple kinds in here already. Similar screw. Let's have it right now. Ooh. Those are all uh, screws into plastic. So, uh, when you're working on something you've never worked on before, it's good to stop and think a lot. <laughs> There's one, two, three screws down low here. a video before I came in here on YouTube on the new Commodore 64. What? It's actually not called a Commodore 64. It's called a... Uh, I forgot the name of it. Something 65. Apparently Commodore had a design for an upgrade to the 64. And it was going to be called the 65. And it it, uh, it never got produced until now. Some some organization, I think in England, has. Uh, okay, we got one thing we need to unplug. We don't actually have to unplug it. We'll just leave it hanging there. Very good. And this little slot for the wire to come out. Okay, another piece off. Now what do we got? big panel here. Here's the gigantic heat sink for 
Let's see, the power transistor is just, just in here. That's a pretty hefty duty. That's pretty heavy. Heavy deal. Okay, we don't need to worry about that. Um, or do we? So this is screwed here and screwed there, but more importantly, the heat sinks of the two power transistors are screwed to it. This this not coming off and getting out of the way easily. This whole board would have to come off and get out of the way, which is kind of what the instructions suggest. Um, this panel is part of this. There's a screw back here you cannot get at with this here. They didn't, they didn't put a hole in it for your screwdriver. Wow, looks like you really have to do what they say. Remove this whole board. And we're probably going to have to remove this whole power supply. And we can take this top panel off. And then we just can see the tape deck at that point. Maybe. I'm sure. Okay. Coffee break time before I uh, before I dive into this. Okay. We're referring to the manual, the next step is to unplug the power board. We're gonna do that. There and then Do we really have to unplug that? Maybe not. We'll leave that one. We'll leave everything plugged in we can get away with. The only other thing plugged in here is the power. We can leave that. It's certainly not plugged in. Okay, we'll take these four screws out and the whole power supply should come off. I've said a couple times my experience with this kind of thing is not all that great. Could be this is easier than I, I realize. Maybe I'm being too unoptimistic. Now I need to keep these screws in order here, so I'm going to stop and get a special screw tray. Here's my special screw tray. The screws I already took out while they're, they're all together in a container. I'll have to sort them out. From here on, I'll do this in order. So, I was just watching on TV. Oh, I think I mentioned this. Mega 65. That's the name of the computer. The Mega 65. I have a bunch of Commodore computers. The other day I had them out and uh, I can't get any of them to operate. I worked at it and worked at it. And two of them, one of them operated for a few seconds properly. And uh, I couldn't sort out what the problem was with it. Okay, so this, this should just lift right out of here. It should just lift right out of here. Is it stuck? Well, it's heavy, that's why I'm not lifting it right out. Screw hidden here. Ooh, surprise screw. Wait a minute now. Huh? Yeah, that's right onto this back panel. One of those sneaky little devils. Okay. Put that in the next tray. Power supply comes off. Next thing is to get this board out of here. I think so. Oh, it's got this kind of connectors that I just, I just. Okay, let me study up on the manual here, and then we'll do the next step. So the service manual shows only two wires, two cables being removed from from this board. And yet, look, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 altogether plugged in there or so. The two it's pointing to are these two here. 
the rest of these, you know, they're pretty long. And uh, there, there's even, hard to see on the camera, but there's even a couple that come around through here. But I think I can leave all those connected. Take this board and just move it out of the way. But I think I'd have to do these ones to do that. I guess that's why they're shown being removed. Now, again, my lack of familiarity here. Let me just boost the light in my shop. So I'm pretty sure these kinds of connectors have a bit of a clip arrangement. You have to sort of unclip them a little bit. I don't think I can do it with this. Well, it doesn't feel like it. Um, it can't just be a matter of pulling it out, can it? You just pull it out and shove it back in. Well, a lot of plugs work that way. Maybe that's what's happening here. Pull a little bit. How hard should you pull before you say that ain't working? About this hard. Okay, so I got that out. Now we'll do this one down here. Okay, those two are out. See, there's a couple of little ones up here too. Uh, those weren't mentioned in the manual at all. These look like they're going up to these two buttons on the top here. There's an order to them. I will have captured that on video. Um, okay, I think I can get these out and get them back in properly. I think at this point, this board should come away. There's nothing really. Oh, this has to go with it. This, I don't remember it saying anything about this. This, this has to go with it. Oh, I get a screwdriver right through the slot here. Undo this. This is where it's going to start becoming difficult to remember where screws go. So I'd like to put that screw right back in the hole. Can't do that right now. Put it there. Goodness knows I won't know what I'm doing. <laughs> i got to put this back together. Now the screws that are holding it on, holding that on there. arrow pointing at it. This one, double arrow pointing at these, but I don't want to do these. These are holding this. This, well it's got to be more than just one screw holding this whole board. Oh my gosh, it looks like just one screw at this point. <laughs> okay. is to swing it over or even lay it down because the engineers made it that way. Now I'm in trouble here. I got not enough hands to do this. Let's pop this out here. And pop this over here. Can you lay down? Can you lay down? Let's get it 
more laid down. Pulling on this one wire here, cable rather. Wow, it's putting a fair bit of pressure on one of these cables, this one. So I'm going to pull this one out. Be enough now. Okay, so this is sitting on the bench. What's next is next is uh, a little coffee and uh, read the manual a little more. Okay, so just a matter of taking out more screws. But it looks like I could probably have left this sitting on top of here. And take this base plate right off. I didn't have to separate them, but that's really not a problem. Like a lot of things, you only learn it after you make the mistake. I shouldn't even call this a mistake. Okay. Yeah, when you're doing something for the first time, usually by the end of it, you go, okay, now I know how to do it. <laughs> It's too late. So watching another video, and like you commonly hear, people are making predictions. You know, by 2080, by 2070, this one was by 2090, something would happen. And I'm just thinking, you know, like technology is marching forward. We don't know what's coming down the pipe. Can't make any realistic prediction way out into the future like that. Yep. There it is. But I don't see any belt yet. Okay, I'll put this over here. <laughs> There's the motor. So we know the belt is just behind here. Okay, better look in the manual some more and see what it says. So the four screws I took out early on out of the base are actually screws that were holding this. So this isn't held in anymore. So supposedly, you can, yeah, it's loose, but I never took the front off. take the front off now. Not getting anywhere like this. Oh boy. The front is coming off with a screw here. Another one there. Is that it? And the front comes off some screws up underneath here. Now that's going to get a little tricky. Got, uh, this thing's still wired in. How am I going to tip all this? Uh, let me look closer with the manual here. Okay, so the manual's showing two on the sides and one on the bottom. And then uh, I think this will be free to come up. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I'm going to tip this this way, so I should get the screw out of there first. Might as well do the other side now. Are you old enough to remember the TV with the works in a drawer? Remember that? That was the big selling part. That it could be. Oh, look at that. I leave it. Put my finger on a transistor there and bent it down without meaning to. Okay. Yeah, it works in a drawer, so it's it's a kind of modular design. Okay, that's actually very good do the rest of the work like this. I don't see one screw, I see two. And 
just going to peek at the manual here very quickly. Two screws is what it actually shows. Okay. So what they show in the manual, they'll show one screw example, and then out here they'll write three times something or other. So there's three, or in this case, two. You got to read the numbers. this back together in exactly the same order I'm taking it apart where my high-tech screw tray is going to fail me here. Wow, it seems to be just rock solid. something. Two on the sides, two on the bottom. It really doesn't look like there could be anything else holding it in. Um, There's some uh, positioning pins, like there's a positioning pin there. So it means you, you, you can't drag this plate relative to the black plastic, plastic part here until that pin is released in some way. Have I gotten far enough and don't realize it? I did and did not realize it. Okay, now I've got a big problem here. I've got one more wire I've got to pull out. Okay, I probably didn't need to do those screws on the front. attached. I think I can probably place it here. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't look like a tape deck anymore. Looks like a pile of junk on my bench here. Doesn't look like a, a stereo. Yeah. Next step. Is it by some chance the, the motor's actually exposed down here and I just haven't looked yet? There's the motor, and the uh, belt is going to be up, up on top. The belt is going to be somewhere in this area here. Oh boy. Some little screws here. Oh boy. Maybe if this back panel comes off. read up once again in the manual. Okay, so it appears to me like the secret here is going to be taking this little back plate off, this plate, which it shows is held in by two screws. There they are. And then I think we can see the belt. And it may not be easy to replace it even at that point. The belt may be captured in some way. sound was me dragging the uh, 
screwdriver shank across a bumpy piece of metal. <laughs> That's all that was. It's nothing weird. There it is again. Now, here it comes. There's the belt! Voila! And it's an easy replacement. There's no problem here. Fantastic. Let's just size up the belt now. And you see the belt says Precision Drive Belt Kit Sony HD CP300. That's exactly what this machine is. So do I have any doubts? No, it looks good. Looks good. Now, how do we know for sure this is really the problem? <laughs> so I'm checking the tension. When I put the new belt on, I'll check the tension of that. Don't nick the belt, Jim. No nicking. A slight nick on the belt, and of course it's going to break down the road. So let's do that. Pull this out of here. Now, you know what I could do now? I could easily mix up the good with the bad. This is the good. Don't mix them up, Jim. The one at the back is the good. Is the good. Look at look at look at the difference. So you can see the old belt has stretched out. Okay, goodbye to the old belt. On the new belt. Okay, I don't really want to pinch it with a pair of pliers. I just use my fingers. The new belt is on. Tension is, yeah, you can feel the difference. Perfect. Okay, now. Just have to put it all back together. I'm gonna go and take another break. Lots of breaks this time. Okay, so I'm gonna reassemble the machine just by trying to do everything in reverse, of course. And uh, we'll see. We'll see how this comes out. And if it works, I won't. I won't put it on video while I put it all back together. Okay, small progress update here. Everything's going along fine. Only took me five minutes to find a screw I dropped on the floor. Uh, one thing is you cannot get this back in if you have this screwed back in place. This has to be just a little loose. It doesn't have to be right off, just a little loose. And then this will drop into its proper uh, location. There are pins, you know, that have to settle into holes and that, so you can tell when you get it into the right position. So. Uh, few more parts to put on, power supply basically, and we're going to give this guy a try pretty soon. Okay, I've got it assembled except for the back cover and the, the general cover, but all electronically it's, it's ready to go. So before I put a pile more screws in, let's give it a test. Remind myself, volume control, I guess I came off my bench here. Okay, it's a digital volume control. This, this, this button here, I should have looked at that a little closer. Actually, I never had this apart enough to see what's going on with this. This button, it says standby about it. Standby. Okay, we're plugging it in. We haven't got any power there yet. So I think this is the on off button. It sure looks like it. It's all worn out. Too much turning on and off. Okay, we're going to apply power. Now, there was a second click there. Um, was that this guy making that click? So, I think I see something on the panel here. Okay. Um, switch on. Um, that didn't do anything. How did I have this on the last time? Uh, hmm. 
how do you turn this guy on? Don't tell me this this switch is gonna. Oh, hey! Oh, I think it's trying to play. It's doing something up here. Someone like you. Hey, it's playing a song. I didn't put any speakers onto it. Um, so, okay, well, that's good. Let's see if it'll eject. So, I want to stop. Sounded good. CD1, CD2, CD3. And the CD is in, it doesn't say which one. Did these light up at one point? Well, let's eject them. We eject one. Bingo. How do you like that? It's a busy, busy machine back there. Eject two. And it's not going to eject. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, my gosh, there's a two in there. Okay, eject two. Okay. There's another CD in there. Let's eject number three. Okay. I was busy trying it. It's a Dell. So there they are. Okay, we'll put them all back in. Guy in. Number three. Okay, and we're going to put in number two. Number two. Okay, tries to play it right away, of course, because it's thinking, well, why else are you putting a CD in there? You must be putting it in to play it. And number three is coming out. Not diggity dog. How do you like that? Number three in. Very good. Now we're going to let that play. And I'm going to hook up some speakers. Here. Or am I? Am I going to be able to do that easily? Um, so my shop speakers come with that. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put the headphones in. I think we're going to check it with headphones. But I'd be stunned if it's not working. Or what else can I do here? Can I do something else kind of clever? Okay, let me stop and get clever. Okay, so I don't want to get a uh, copyright hit on my uh, video. So I'm just going to turn this up for a moment. This is with two speakers. In your That's it. That's fantastic. I just have to put the covers on and it's all done. Fantastic. Okay, got it all back together. It really wasn't that hairy a deal at all. Fantastic. So let's give it a try. <laughs> I don't know, I turned the power on in my shop and then there was a click in here. That's twice now. I don't know what it was. I don't think it's this. Switch on. Switch on again. Uh, how come you're not going? There it goes. Oh, was it because of that? So it's set to play FM. Now, there's no antenna in the back, so you can't expect it to pick up too much. This must be the tuner here. No, that's fast. That's the tape. Here's the tuning here. Okay, we'll take it up to 91.5. 91.5. Well, it's not going to pick anything up without an antenna. Uh, do I have a quick antenna? Quick, quick antenna. Quick antenna would be any piece of wire with me on the end of it. Let's try this. Quick antenna. Looking at the antenna. 
Oh, I saw which one of these. Just point at the station. Working. That's enough. And tape deck. Because we say, we don't want to play this now. Push stop. Disc number one. 48 minutes long, 11 tracks. It's in shuffle mode. I guess I have to push play. Eject, eject, eject. Stop. Eject. I don't know which one we're playing. DSG. Digital Sound Goop. Well, we'll pick one. Eject number one. That's the one we were playing right there. Put it back in. Ah, diggity dog. Okay. So there we are. I've done very few of these kinds of repair jobs. Very few. But uh, that really wasn't all that bad. It was more, more scary than it needed to be for me. So there we are. Fantastic. This belongs to a neighbor of mine. They'll be real happy when they get it back. So thanks a lot for watching. And uh, what do I do next? I've got a radio, an old radio. It needs string put on. I've worked on it for like three or four sessions. And it's still not on, so I may, I may, I may take a run at that next. Try to finish it up. So thanks a lot for watching, and uh, have a great day. Bye.